Like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Arts organizations in the Northern Rivers are taking on a pivotal role in rebuilding a community devastated by floods at the end of March, as floodwaters rose in Les Moor for the second time in just four weeks. A portrait of Carla Dickens was delivered to the Art Gallery of New South Wales in Sydney. The painting, titled Moby Dickens, is Dunutty artist Black Douglas S. entry into the Archibald Prize. It depicts Dickens, a Les Moor based Irigiri artist, standing in floodwaters, holding a leaking pail of water in each hand. While Dickens lives five kilometres from the CBD, hit hardest by the floods, the constant rain in the region destroyed her studio. If, the painting makes one more person aware of what has happened where I live, I am really grateful for that, Dickens says. The Wilsons River in Les Moor peaked at 14.4 metres on February 28 and flooded again in late March. Homes, businesses and art spaces were inundated, leaving some residents stranded on their roofs. Douglas, born Adam Hill, who had already started his portrait of Dickens, his friend, prior to the floods, realized he needed to change it. I was definitely happy that he made that choice, Dickens says. I said, as long as you make it grumpy. I want to be grumpy. She says the holes in the bottom of the bucket symbolize the government's inaction on climate change. Climate change is happening. It is here. We re all living in the middle of it and it is only a matter of time till people are affected just like the people of the northern rivers have been. Speaking to ABC Arts in the month after the floodwaters peaked, artists and arts organizations in the region shared their experiences and posed ideas about how to rebuild, with the art sector taking on a pivotal role. The damage the estimated cost of the damage to independent artists across the northern rivers, as of April 5th, is more than $5.1 million, averaging about $20,000 per artist, according to the region's peak at support body, Arts Northern Rivers. People have lost not just their homes, cars, possessions and are homeless, but they have lost their future income, studios, whole collections, equipment, musical instruments, the lot, says Jane Fuller, Arts Northern Rivers Executive Director. It is the most catastrophic thing I've ever experienced. Lismore Regional Gallery Director Ashley Ralph does not yet know the extent of the damage to their collection. All the artworks were damaged. We may not be able to save them all, she says. Among these are the Hannah Cabinet, valued at more than $1.5 million. Works by artists Margaret Ollie and Max Tupain. And the Afghanistan War Rugs collection being toured by a new S. Drill Hall gallery. The Conservatives are positive about restoring the Hannah Cabinet, though it may take some time, Ralph says. Her team worked for 10 days straight cleaning up the gallery, with more than 450 volunteers arriving to help in that first week. It was a community effort. People who had never been to the gallery before as well, just showing up knowing that they could lend a hand, says Ralph. But flooding in late March has set the clean-up effort back. We had it, the building at the most pristine it could possibly be, and then the floods came through again, we have to clean it again like the rest of the city. History repeating Les Morris Flood Levy, built in 2005, overflowed for the first time in March 2017, leading to a so-called one-in-100-year flood. At that time, Norpa, Northern Rivers Performing Arts, based at the Les Morris City Hall, was inundated with 2M of water, silt and sewerage. Their studio, green room, furniture, and much of their archives were wiped out. This year, the impact on the venue was much worse, amounting to around $500,000 of damage, according to Julian Louis, Norpa's artistic director and CEO. Their Norpa flood relief fundraising campaign has raised more than $36,000 so far. After 2017, organizations like Lismore Regional Gallery and Norpa created flood plans which they enacted in February as the waters rose, moving much of their collections and equipment upstairs. These measures proved to be insufficient, but were better than local council precautions, which Louis describes as basically non-existent. Council put up some signs that showed us how high the flood was in previous years. 
and that is about it, says Louis. Local council need to review their own learning and have in place things that can support the community. Government response The NSW government committed up to $435,000 in flood relief funding to the arts sector in the Northern Rivers in March, with Arts Minister Ben Franklin noting that the region has the highest number of creative practitioners per capita in the state. As part of this, Create NSW allocated $70,000 to Arts Northern Rivers to deliver micro-grants of up to $1,000 to local artists and groups and a further $70,000 to Screenworks for